What is an IBC solar cell and how does it work? IBC solar cell technology restructures components in the solar cell and includes additional ones to increase efficiency for the cell and provide additional benefits. In this section, we explain the materials and the structure of IBC solar cells, and we explain the operating principle for the technology. Materials and components of the IBC solar cell. The main component featured in most IBC solar cells is a CC wafer that acts as the N-type wafer absorber layer, but P-type wafers are also used. Monocrystalline silicon, mono CC, is the most common option due to its higher efficiency, but polycrystalline silicon, poly CC, can also be used. An anti-reflective and passivation layer is placed on one of the two sides of the CC wafer, being manufactured with a thin layer of silicon dioxide, CO2, placed through a thermal oxidation process. Materials like silicon nitride, CNX, or boron nitride, BNX, are also suitable. For IBC solar cells to relocate frontal contacts at the rear side of the cell, they require interspersed or interdigitated layers of N plus and P plus emitters called the diffusion layer. To create it, layers of the N-type wafer are doped with phosphorus through mask diffusion, masked ion implantation, or laser doping, creating the P-type, P+, digitation, while the N-type layers stay intact, N+. Metal contacts are also placed by laser ablation or wet chemical deposition, using regular metals like silver, nickel, or copper for the contacts of the IBC solar cell. Structure of the IBC solar cell Manufacturing IBC solar cell can be quite complex considering the creation of the diffusion layer, but understanding its structure is relatively simple. The main layer for the IBC solar cell is the N-type or P-type CC wafer functioning as the absorber layer. This layer is manufactured by doping a CC layer with boron or phosphorus, to create a P-type or N-type doped wafer. Then, an anti-reflective and passivation coat usually made out of CO2 is placed on one or two sides of the solar cell. Working Principle of the IBC Solar Cell IBC solar cells generate solar power under the photovoltaic effect as LBSF solar cells do. The load is connected between positive and negative terminals of the IBC solar panel, with photons being converted into electricity, creating solar power to energize the load. The EH pair formed at the front of the IBC solar cell is then collected by a P-type interdigitated layer at the back. Collected electron flows from P-plus metal contacts to the load, generating electricity, and then going back to the IBC solar cell through the N-plus metal contact, ending that particular EH pair. Roundup, the benefits of IBC solar cells. IBC solar panels have many benefits that make them outstand from traditional LBSF technology and others. In this section, we round up the benefits of IBC solar cell technology. Reduce losses by shading. IBC solar cell restructuration places frontal metal contact on the rear side of the cell, eliminating shade caused by the bus bars. By doing this, IBC solar cell increases the photon effective absorption which results in reduced power losses and several other benefits. Reduced series resistance. IBC solar cells lower the series resistance at the cell from traditional LBSF cells, by being able to place larger metal contacts at the rear side of the cell, becoming a key factor for CPV applications. Increased power output per square meter. With an increased efficiency for IBC solar cells, an IBC solar panel can be manufactured without space between cells, further increasing the power output per square meter for a single module. This makes IBC solar cell technology more compelling for applications with limited space. Independent optical-slash-electrical optimizations. Since IBC solar cells relocate metal contacts at the back, the optical and electrical optimizations for the cell are decoupled, making each optimization completely independent from the other, making it easier for researchers to improve one or the other separately. What is a heterojunction solar panel? Heterojunction solar panels are assembled similarly to standard homojunction modules, but the singularity of this technology lies in the solar cell itself. To understand the technology, we provide you with a deep analysis of the materials, structure, manufacturing, and classification of the HJT panels. Materials required to manufacture a heterojunction solar cell. There are three important materials used for HJT cells. Crystalline silicon, CC. Amorphous silicon, AC. Indium tin oxide, ITO. Crystalline silicon is regularly used to create standard homojunction solar cells, seen in conventional panels. There are two varieties of CC, polycrystalline and monocrystalline silicon, but monocrystalline is the only one considered for HJT solar cells since it has a higher purity and therefore more efficient. 
Amorphous silicon is used in thin film PV technology and is the second most important material for manufacturing heterojunction solar cells. While AC on itself has density defects, applying a hydrogenating process solves them, creating hydrogenated amorphous silicon, ACH, which is easier to dope and has a wider bandgap, making it better for creating HJT cells. Indium tin oxide is the preferred material for the transparent conductive oxide, TCO, layer of the heterojunction solar cell, but researchers are investigating using indium-free materials that will reduce costs for this layer. The reflectivity and conductivity properties of ETO make it a better contact and external layer for the HJT solar cell. Structure of the heterojunction solar cell The absorber layer of the heterojunction solar cell encloses a CC wafer-based layer, blue layer, placed between two thin intrinsic, I, ACH layers, yellow layer, with doped ACH layers, red and green layers, placed on top of each ACH. I, layer. The number of TCO layers varies depending on the HJT cell being monofacial or bifacial, with the rear layer being a metal layer acting as the conductor for monofacial heterojunction cells. How do heterojunction solar panels work? Heterojunction solar panels uses three layers of absorbing materials combining thin film and traditional photovoltaic technologies. The process involves connecting the load to the terminals of the module, with the photons being converted into electricity and generating an electric current flowing through the load. To generate electricity, a photon impacts the PN junction absorber and excites an electron, causing it to move to the conduction band and creating an electron hole, EH, pair. The excited electron is collected by the terminal connected to the P-doped layer, creating the electricity that flows through the load. After flowing through the load, the electron flows back to the rear contact of the cell and recombines with a hole, ending that particular EH pair. This is constantly happening as the modules generate electricity. A phenomenon called surface recombination occurs in standard CCPV modules, which limits their efficiency. During this process, an excited electron pairs with a hole at the surface of the material, causing them to recombine without the electron being collected and flowing as an electric current. To reduce surface recombination, HJT cells separate the contacts from the wafer base layer using a passivating semiconductor film. This buffer layer creates a high voltage, but fast enough to avoid recombination. During the light absorbing process, all of the three semiconductor layers will be absorbing photons and converting them into electricity. The first photons arriving will be absorbed by the exterior ACH layer, converting them into electricity. The majority of the photons, however, are converted by the CC layer, which has the highest solar conversion efficiency among the materials in the cell. The remaining photons are finally converted by the ACH layer at the rear side of the module. This three-step process is the reason why monofacial HJT solar cells have achieved solar efficiencies of up to 26.7%. Summing up, what benefits do heterojunction panels offer? Heterojunction solar panels can be quite beneficial since they have an improved technology with great potential in the solar industry. These are some major benefits of the technology. High efficiency. With a 26.07% conversion efficiency for monofacial modules and more than 30% for bifacial, Heterojunction places itself as one of the most efficient solar technologies in the industry. This makes it convenient for applications with limited space, areas requiring large generation capacities, and others. Good temperature coefficient. Heterojunction solar cell technology is less affected by changes in temperature. This makes it great for applications in locations with high temperatures, which can negatively affect the performance of standard CC modules. High bifaciality. HJT cell has a high bifaciality factor of 92%, making HJT deliver a great performance when designed as a bifacial module. This technology is becoming more popular for utility-scale applications, which seek to take advantage of the albedo resource. Easy manufacturing process. Heterojunction solar cells have additional steps in the manufacturing process, but this does not highly increase the cost. This technology only involves 5 to 7 steps during manufacturing, and the price for the necessary equipment is constantly being reduced, showing a great promise for the future of HJT.